What can I say about Newcomer Central Peak? This is it. This organization is my second home. Uh, I've been working with the newcomers, refugees and immigrants, families uh, uh, for decades, since 1989. And um, we started very small, um, but now we, uh, we are operating as a hub uh, in the middle of uh, a big city. And last year only, I can say, um, the, our, our data shows that we opened the door to 13,000 English classes, employment um, programs related to youth, seniors. Seniors are very important. Um, and then it's very close to my heart because they've been doing it. They've been working so hard uh, through their lives, and it's still they're working because they're helping their children to go to work, to study, to go, go to the colleges and university, and also they take care of their grandchildren. So they're so important. We have to take care of them. They have to age with dignity, um, and then we use their, their wisdom also. Friends of Seniors is very uh, important uh, program that was funded by Minister of uh, Citizenship, MCIIT, um, uh, which is uh, really um, uh, sort of a heads up to uh, give um, seniors more knowledge, um, more education, um, to just avoid the isolation, uh, which is killing, uh, and also having them to learn if there is unfortunate uh, situations like fraud or abuse, they can just uh, have a safe uh, um, place that they can talk and learn uh, from the uh, very knowledgeable staff that we have in this program. Um, I think um, seniors, seniors really uh, deserve this kind of program and it should be continue uh, to help them to navigate into their own new life here in Canada. So the Friends of Seniors program, uh, it's an educational program to raise awareness around elder abuse prevention amongst uh, newcomer communities, uh, general public, and the region of Peel. So we had a lot of sessions, especially on intergenerational relationships. When they come here, how they even um, build this bond and family connection with their grandchildren who are raised here and their kids to prevent this going to abusive relationship. Uh, I was leading those sessions as well as I partner with community, um, uh, community agencies to invite professionals, experts on specific topics. magic day that we all get together. This is amazing. When we get even together, it's a positive energy going out, you know. If you feel bad, it's, you feel um, not uh, happy, when you get together, this amazing energy, positive energy, heal you, bring hope and energy and healing you. So you feel good today. Definitely when you go home, you feel happy. Uh, with no further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Kim Wilson. Thank you so much, Evet, for the invitation to be here, and, and thank you so much to all the staff and volunteers at the Newcomer Center of Peel. This is a really exciting uh, day to be part of. Um, in particular, I was asked to talk about self-care. So, it's a day of caring. Many of you in the room are caring for other people as part of your day-to-day -day roles, but it's also really important to pause and throughout the lifespan make sure that we engage in self-care. Research 
research has shown that engaging in self-care regularly can actually increase your life expectancy. And so we, maybe we're not worried about how old we are, but many of us want to live longer to see our children and grandchildren grow up and, and be engaged in and part of their lives. So it's definitely a huge misconception that um, depression is a part of growing old. And I think there's a few contributing factors in terms of ageism. We have make assumptions about what it's like to grow old, but also there's stigma related to mental illness. And when the two come together, it can be particularly challenging to sort of for people to feel comfortable talking about their mental health. So my biggest message would be depression is not a typical consequence of aging. Older adults are huge contributors in terms of you know, giving back to families, spending money, putting money into the economy, um, volunteering, um, being productive members of society. And age is pretty arbitrary. You know, we use 65 as this cutoff about what it means to be old, but we know that there's people who are working, raising families well up into their 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond. And so I think we need to focus much more on the positives associated with an aging population. smokes a lot and his doctor tells him not to smoke he still smokes so it has, must have a big impact on his day-to-day -day functions. I only have one grandma left because um, 
my other three grandparents died. And so um, uh, I was particularly close with my grandma and I still am, but like then she got cancer and um, then like she started like kind of being on her own and stuff. And so um, I, I'm not really looking forward to having that in my life, like if I get older and that happens to me. Well, my paternal grandfather, he has strokes, so his memory is not that good. And we didn't visit him for a pretty long time. So when we visited, he didn't seem to recognize me or my sister. He recognized my mom, but not me and my sister. Mm -hmm. And I have this little like a book, her handwritten notes of what she lived through. and. Just believe it. I, I was crying, she was crying, but it was such a positive experience because I learned a lot and she shared with me. And just to sit down, talk to your grandparents. Okay, so how's the interpreters? Can I have a hand with the interpreters? <laughs> Spanish table. Okay, you don't look Spanish. You speak in Spanish? Si. Sí. Si. Sí. Sí. Que bueno para no decir cosas malas cuando veo un chico chulo. Colombia? Peru. Peru? Ecuador. Ecuador? Costa Rica. Costa Rica? Philippines. Says, do you know who this is? That's what they're going to say to you. And you're going to say, is it Johnny? Yeah, 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 it's Johnny. How you doing? Okay, Grandma, please, I'm in a lot of trouble. I just, I went to Montreal for the weekend. I got arrested. The, the car got impounded. I need $2,000 to get home. Otherwise, Dad's going to kill me. Please don't tell him. Can you please wire me the money? And grandma doesn't want to get, you know, little Johnny in trouble. So what do they do? They get the information, they get the credit card, they go to the bank, they get the money, they wire the money over, money's gone. It's done. And then, you know, okay, I'll pay you back, whatever. They come home, they talk to they see little Johnny and hey, how are you? Are you okay now? And what are you talking about, grandma? Si no, no, no. Otra documentación que dice que es tu nombre, una licencia, estoy caminando, cosas que son para mí nada del de segundo mundo, pero. Si de nuevo sabes quién es, la que se está perfecto. Pero. You don't need your social insurance number. You don't need your passport. You don't need stuff that's going to be very hard for you to get if the criminal takes your wallet and now they've got all your documents. So the best thing to do is always go to the door and even if you don't speak English, just let someone know that you're there. Can I help you? You do not, do not have to open the door. You can talk to them through a closed door. There's nothing rude about that. So just talk to the closed door, just say, hi, can I help you? Hello? Let them know you're there. Because if it's not somebody that you know and that person is there with the intent to break in, he will go away once he knows that someone is there. I'm gonna pretend I'm in my car. I need someone's purse. Can I get a purse? I get a purse. I'm taking your purse. Okay? All right. So I'm driving. My <laughs> okay. What a lot of people do is they wait in shopping malls and uh, wait for the the victim to come out into their cars and while they're coming into their cars, while they're waiting for them, they'll let air out of their tires and then they'll approach the victim and say, uh, you're a good Samaritan act, your tire is flat, I think you should know. And obviously you're taken by surprise, so you think, oh wow, my tire is flat, I better go look at it. You get out of your vehicle and you go to the, look at your back tire. While you're doing that, you're forgetting that your packages or even your purse in the front seat, any activity, even if it's for even two minutes, and you're going to your garage to get your supplies or to your backyard to get the hose, make sure your garage is always locked and your front door is locked. I know nobody wants to lock the front door when they're going into the backyard, but if you're gonna be there for a prolonged period of time, bad guy knows that and they're gonna walk right into your house while you're in the backyard as if nothing's going on and all the time in the world so they can see where you are and you have no idea someone's in your house. We assume that because we're on our property, it's secure and it's not. Thank you very much, Constance. You're welcome. Thank you.
Appeal Addiction Assessment and Referral Center is a non-for-profit agency and so we don't charge anything for any of the services we provide for our clients. One of the bigger traumas is moving from one country to another. There's certainly some grief and loss involved in that and there's a whole bunch of things that you have to adapt to and you all know more than I do about that because you've lived it. There is a certain amount sometimes of shame related to uh, alcohol or drug use or, or gambling behaviors that are unhealthy and so people don't talk about it, they don't want their kids to know about it, they don't want their grandchildren to know about it. So these are other reasons why they may not be comfortable accessing care in a traditional uh, addiction facility. So we know a lot of older adults are isolated in community and um, they have their finances change drastically as they retire. So, and we know that financial problems are a concern for vulnerability, so that kind of connects, right? You retire and you suddenly had an income and now you don't have the same income. You're on limited income and you think you can win a big windfall, so I think that makes people more vulnerable. Uh, feelings of loneliness, uh, change, drastic change in life is, is one of the set vulnerabilities that research shows. And who is going through more? change in life and more drastic change in life than older adults when they retire, when their children leave home and have their own lives, when, um, when they have a loss, like a spouse dies, and so then they're alone. Um, so, and, and just access, right? So we know that a lot of the seniors care residences provide bus trips to the casino. And so you have individuals that are already isolated and alone and vulnerable and then they're able to go to the casino and it's one of very limited access and bus trips available so I, it, it's affecting them. Thank you very much for coming to share the challenges or the issues uh, when the newcomer came to Canada, uh, especially for those uh, seniors. Uh, you know, they are most of them sponsored by the children. So they are facing more challenges compared to the other immigrants. I think, I think all of you have those experience, right? A lot of senior, because the children go to work, drive car away. Mm -hmm. So they just can stay at home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they want to shopping, they want to go to play. With. Yeah, visit, visit the yes. friend to mm -hmm. play card, or oh, yes, sometimes feel difficult. So, some people, they don't drive at all, right? Yeah. Because of, a, you know, the English mm -hmm. barrier. Then they feel lonely at home. Yeah, yeah. feel lonely. <laughs> yes. Sometimes go to the hospital. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's difficult. Yeah, so that's a big challenge for the newcomer yeah. seniors mm -hmm. to see the doctor, you know. Uh, especially some people don't know how to take the bus. Yeah, right? for instance, the Misak are very close to Toronto. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know how to take bus or take a subway go to the Toronto. Yeah, you have to have a son or a daughter because <laughs> they will uh, take care take care of you when yeah. you get old. Uh -huh. uh, yes. Yeah, but now and also change. The, yeah, the, the seniors yeah, they don't take care of their. Their the parents, uh, the grandparents anymore, and but they want the, their money. money. Oh, except <laughs> money. <laughs> and always talk to his wife. Say, your mom, your dad. What she talking about? Refer to that right in front of them, so mm -hmm, they feel mm -hmm. pretty bad. And then he say, she says, the most she ever called me is old lady. <laughs> so she's <laughs> <"Lao> tai tai. <laughs> Seniors are the most important in the family. That's right. They are the most respected in the family. Yeah. Back to 50 years ago. Not that long. Not that long. Maybe 20? No. 10? 30? <laughs> 30? But now yeah. even in China they change. Do you think it's a kind of a culture shock or it's common everywhere? You know, after Culture, 
sí, eso sí, va a ser sí, más sí, o menos, sí. no va a ser necesariamente en el centro, pero digamos una organización de asentamiento, okay, pero pueden hablar de que ustedes estaban en clases de inglés. We're speaking with, uh, with Mario Fernanda Valencia and Maria Luisa Potero. Uh, and we're going to ask you what were some of the things that brought you here to Canada from Colombia? Uh, well, there is a couple of points, uh, main points that uh, made us to take the decision to come to Canada. First one uh, was the security. Many relatives of my wife uh, were kidnapped for the guerrilla and killed. And uh, I was afraid that uh, something like that was happening to us. I was civil engineer in Colombia. And uh, I finished my job with a big company, a subsidiary of uh, a branch of Canada uh, uh, company. And uh, when I was going to find another job, uh, everybody tell, tell me, no, uh, you are so old to get a job. It's impossible. Your experience is uh, 25 years of experience. Uh, don't bother to anybody. So uh, I decided to, to get uh, a better place to live and to develop my, my career. Uh, it's, it's hard to take the decision. Go forever. It's not go for, for train, for live, or uh, if you know, return it, no. Together, all my family said, bye forever, bye Colombia. At first, I was uh, very, I had very m much dudes about if I took the, we, we took the, the right decision to come. But uh, we compare the kind of, la the of life here and uh, the living in Colombia and we decided that it was a good decision to come to Canada because um, the peace you can you can buy for any money in the in the world you know so we thought in our dollars that uh, they will have better opportunities here our pleasure is uh, really things in internet and everything. Our grandchildren, oh, we love them. It's a couple of guys, beautiful. So they are our supper, I think, in our elder age. Very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. You're right. yes, you're right. We, we think. We are very lucky couple. Frank, we've actually just been receiving so many new immigrants that are coming in, especially as refugees um, from Syria and Iraq. But just in general, um, Mississauga has been such a huge hub for a lot of newcomers, especially in light of the um, Syrian crisis right now that's sort of taking place and what we've seen happening with Iraq. Um, th those refugees are coming in and they are um, a very different type of immigrant. I remember speaking to a client um, who said that he had received his papers um, saying that he was accepted as a government assisted refugee and can come to Canada but the first thought that went through his mind was how am I going to get to the airport because of the rebels that were sort of along the highway and um, just really sort of um, will I make it there alive with with my two children and with my mother um, and his mother is is a senior not as mobile can't move as quickly as the rest of the family and just having been able to, to speak to them about what they witnessed in their war-torn country um, is, is 
it's just horrifying. Uh, they lived without water and electricity for, for almost a year. Um, they were being shot at in their living room, um, just uh, essentially not uh, burning books to stay warm. Uh, the, these are the types of situations that these refugees have been living in. I mean, a part of what uh, Canada is celebrated for its multiculturalism and uh, for that we're so unique in the world in terms of what we, we can offer with regard to that. And our newcomer seniors bring that to us. They bring us culture. They bring us togetherness. They bring us that, that family unit. And they're sort of the glue sometimes that keeps families together. <laughs> So when I came to Canada, it was my passion to work with people and especially for women. So um, I went through um, education, I get my education and then I got this job. I'm so happy to uh, work with uh, especially women and uh, newcomers and when I, I help someone and when they get these resources and when they get out of the violence, that is the day when I feel that, oh my God, I did something, a little for someone. Congratulations on your graduation day. Amazing. What a nice crowd. <laughs> so today I'm not going to give you a session on the issues related to elder abuse. I would like to recognize our volunteer ambassadors.